All right, so in this week's video, I really had a short amount of time to actually make the video, but this was something I really have been, a project I've really been wanting to do. So I wanted to quickly document it. I wanted to explain a little bit about what was entailed in the project and how we're going to use it. I think it's kind of cool. So let's get into it. So this is the project I've been wanting to do for a while. It is basically a tool battery powered uh, light box and a few other extras. But the main thing it is, is a light controlled uh, unit for inside cargo trailers. So if you wanted to light up inside a trailer and it wasn't hooked up to a vehicle and you needed lights, then you could take your tool battery, which I've decided to use DeWalt because that's the more common of the people who would be uh, using it in the future. Or you can do Milwaukee, you can do any of them. But I just decided to do DeWalt. You hook up your DeWalt battery and I'm going to turn it off right now. All those are off. And then uh, we'll get into the wiring. But basically, uh, you have this is going to be the main power to shut off the entire system. So the battery, if someone leaves the battery on, it's not going to get drained. And then you have three switches for three different circuits of lights. Now, this is going to be for my son's high school uh, band trailer so that they can have lights because they're loading and unloading uh, at, at the in the middle of the night so uh, they need some lights and this is definitely going to light it up typically this is a 5 amp hour battery and based on like 6 or 7 lights that are 2 amp each they should be able to get 30 to 40 minutes of uh, runtime per battery I've got them two batteries so that should give them plenty of time to run uh, during the installation I don't know how much time I'm going to have to uh, film the whole thing or if any I will try to take pictures and uh, definitely get some video of the final product but let's get into the actual setup of the wiring because that's kind of uh, the fun part I thought in trying to get it all set up because we kind of used different parts non-traditionally of how they're sold. And also one other thing um, I did for fun, I uh, wanted to draw up the circuits of this entire thing because I put a lot of thought into it. I used a free program called TinyCAD which was awesome for building circuits and I will have this the link posted in the video description for, for free for anyone who wants to take a look at it and maybe get some ideas off of it. And also any of the items that you see uh, used here today I'll link to the Amazon shop so that you can... Uh, if you want to inter interested in purchasing those items, you can buy it through uh, our link. We'd appreciate it. But also give you some ideas of what we used, and uh, you can see how they're being used in this video. So now we've got everything set up. Uh, I put it, raised it up so you can see it a little better. We're going to go on the inside and outside and take a look at how we got this thing wired up. Uh, first, you got your battery uh, adapter. This is where you hook up your tool battery, the 20 volts up to the uh, system, and it directs the uh, wires, the power, to the inside. On the inside, we go to our low voltage connector circuit. What this circuit does is once the voltage of that battery gets below a certain amount, which you can designate, it, you can, it's variable, so whatever you set it at, it will cut off the entire system. The importance of this is some batteries, uh, well, you don't want your lithium batteries to go below a certain voltage because then it ruins it and it doesn't like to uh, charge back up if it gets too low. Some batteries have that built into the battery itself, some don't. I wasn't sure about DeWalt, I think it does, but I still wanted to be careful. So I've, I added this into the circuit. I'm going to set it to about 16 volts, 16.2 volts to determine what the actual, uh, where the cutoff is. and to. To test it, I'm going to put it in a tool battery, run the battery down until it just stops working, and then test the voltage there, and that will kind of determine where the battery stops uh, voltage-wise, and then I'll reset it. But I think it's around 16, 16.2 volts. So when the battery voltage gets drawn down below 16.2 volts, it will just cut the whole entire system off. Then from here, this takes the... Uh, 18 or 20 volts let's say from the from the tool battery through a, a relay and then takes it up to our pu uh, buck converter the purpose of the buck converter is to convert our 18 or 20 volts down to 12 volts because this system is going to be set based on 12 volts so we can use uh, light fixtures uh, from like RVs and campers and things like that that work on a 12 volt system and also connected to this uh, we split off the wire to the voltage meter. So typically how you would use this whole entire panel is you'd get your 12 volts from your boat battery and it would come into the system. From there you could check your voltage of your battery 
and then uh, you can monitor it as you used it to see if it gets drained down. But for this system, I don't want to monitor the 12 volts because that's going to be constant through this entire time. That really isn't going to tell me anything. I wanted to see the voltage of what this battery is doing uh, the whole entire time. So because I wired the voltmeter uh, into the system before uh, the it goes to the, or in, in line with the buck converter, that will tell me what the voltage is of the battery. But it's after the low voltage connect disconnect. So if this gets cut off, then it cuts off everything, the whole system. So that's kind of, that was kind of important to me because I wanted the person whoever is using it can monitor the battery voltage. And if he sees he's getting down to like 17, 16 volts, then he knows he needs to switch the battery. And talking about the battery, uh, again, any manufacturer would do. I use DeWalt because that's the most common between the dads who are using, uh, going to be uh, helping pull the trailer. But uh, we got two 5 amp batteries for the band. Based on using about six uh, light fixtures, uh, they draw about somewhere between one and a half to two amps per uh, fixture. So I figured this is going to last about 30 to 40 minutes. Got two of them, so that's plenty of what the band needs to do before the batteries have to get recharged. And these have the volt, uh, kind of fake voltmeter on the back of it. This will allow someone looking at the voltmeter to know how much voltage is left on the battery so when they need to change it out. So that's a little bit more a better use of it than uh, just letting it show the 12 volts of the system. But I'll show you how this is all wired up in the back. So after the buck converter, it changes from the 20 volts to 12 volts. We've got our fuse block here. With the fuse block, you got the 12 volts coming in. It delivers 12 volts to six different circuits that it can be fused. I'm only going to be using three for our lights and one for some accessories, which I'll show you in a minute. Then all the grounds can come back, or the neutrals can come back to the grounding leg. And then you have one which connects to this lug, which is the main grounding, which goes back to the buck converter to complete the circuit. So basically, the three circuits will be going to one for each switch that we have on the front. Now, this was, uh, again wired up so you got 12 volts coming in and you just boom 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 you can send 12 volts to all your lights well I wanted these to be individually fused rather than having just one fuse uh, which is how they had it wired so each of these will be one uh, individually fused and then uh, they'll have their own leg own circuit leg and then uh, so each power comes in and then we'll have another uh, wire coming out that will actually go to the light fixture circuit and that's how that the switch is control controlling it so the the fourth circuit was just accessory power basically it's powering up the uh, USB chargers the power adapter or cigarette lighter adapter and all these switches have lights on them when uh, the system's powered up and that's how they get their 12 volt power so that's basically like an accessory leg for that. This panel box pro or project box is basically a uh, with the Apollo Harbor Freight uh, case that can be used for guns. It's watertight which is good for outside but since this is going to be an enclosed trailer I went ahead and took the gaskets off uh, to more to let more air flow through here because I don't know how hot this buck converter is going to get. If it seems to get too hot then I can add a computer fan because it's going to be 12 volts and to help cool the system off. But for right now, we'll just kind of watch it. I also did take the handle off. There's a handle right here. Just to make this look more like a pa circuit panel uh, or project box rather than a suitcase that's going to be drilled to the wall. So this is pretty a nice little tight enclosure. I did drill a hole and put some... Uh, uh, these are used for Romex wiring. Or, but I'm just going to use it to just hold down the wires that we have coming in. And then we have the ground coming in on the side here. So this will make a lot more sense uh, when we get it into the, the uh, band trailer. Circuit diagram will be free to download, but this basically shows all the wiring and, uh, of how this box is wired up. So it might be a little bit easier to see. So just to show how this box looks when it's wired, uh, powered up, you, so you put your battery there. This is going to be your main power. I've got to label it too. So this is on off. This will basically cut the entire power off to the system so that the battery can be left on but it won't be drawing uh, nothing will be drawing power not the cigarette lighter adapters uh, not the voltage so it doesn't have any parasitic draw so you just power that on all your lights light on 
The top ones don't light on until you got power going to them. You see we got 20.5 volts. That's showing you what the battery pack is, so that's good. I don't know if this has lights or not, but yeah, the USB has lights, so it's showing that that's got power going to it and it was ready to charge. And then as you use your different circuits, you push it to power on. It shows the lights on. That means the lighted circuit is is powered on. You'll be able to see it from the panel, but still this is kind of a neat feature to have these lights that you can light up just like that. And on the inside, you can see our low voltage disconnect is showing the 20 volts also. When that number reaches down to our 16.2 um, cutoff, it will shut the entire thing off. Let's see. All right, I'm at 16 volts. So that's the, going to be the low voltage cutoff. So here are the four different types of lights we're going to be installing into our system. The first one is this uh, line of LEDs. They're, they're pods of lights with three LEDs at each, and they're kind of like a string. Now right now they're connected by the uh, adhesive strips, and you've got to cut them to separate it. But I think this is about 10 feet long, and each one's about 1.5 amps. We're going to have three of these in our trailer. The trailer is about 20 feet long, so that should have good coverage over what we need. Um, and they say that it's best to wire them up parallel, which we will, rather than circuit, which means one uh, from one line to another to another line. We're going to have 12 volts going directly to each power. So we'll see how that goes, and um, that should give us a lot of interior lights. Then on the outside, we've just got the spotlights. This came two to a package and is very bright. And again, all these are 12 volts, so um, we'll be able to run it off the same system. We won't have to convert anything. They came in two to a package and also came with mounting hardware, so that's good for the exterior. And it's pretty decent quality. It's only like 20, 30 bucks. Now this I want to put on the back of the tra trailer, and this is a 45 degree mounted light and this is nice aluminum casing it's not plastic and this is going to direct light downward so when you're coming off the back uh, ramp of the trailer you can have some lights coming down to see where you're walking so that's kind of neat I like that and just for fun I've got LED strips which we're going to line the uh, back door on the inside and you can change the color you got this 45 button um, color changer you can do flashing and all that but our high school colors are green so they can turn on green and it will light up the, the door and just make it kind of impressive just kind of to show off uh, having a, a green interior light uh, around there but that's just for fun the rest of the lights are more for function and that's all that we're using so we got three of these which is about um, what six amps these do two each so that's four and then these do I think one and a half to two each and I've got two of them we might just use one so that's basically all the power so we're not having a lot of power amperage draw so that's why I think the 5 amp 5 amp hour battery is good enough for what we need and we've got two of them one for backup too you just gotta make sure they're charged before you're ready to go and use them Now that I'm on site, here we are. First thing we do is to install the power box. There, I'm just checking to make sure it's tightly secured. We actually had one aluminum rib that we were able to screw into. The other side was screwed in just to the wood, but it's, it's pretty tight up there. Then the next thing we moved on, we installed the string lights. Here I'm connecting two of the lights together and soldering them with the pine sill and taping them up to make sure that it's tightly secured. And here, after I tape the two ends, I like to tape the wires together, just kind of make it one unit so they're not flapping around, um, and they're tight and neat. And here I'm adding the power wires to the end of the string lights, and eventually these wires will lead back to the power box, and this is, will be the power and ground for the light. Now, in this shot, this is my pine, so I love it. I'm showing here in real time how long it takes for it to go from zero, which is cold, all the way up to 340 degrees Celsius. And it took exactly 13 seconds. That's why I love this pine sole. 
it uh, makes soldering uh, much more accessible and quicker because before my weller would take minutes and I just couldn't wait that long even for small jobs uh, I would just put a wire nut or something on and just skip it but now that the pine sole is uh, boots up so fast and heats up so fast I use it a lot more often which is which is great now here on the ends uh, I'm putting the connectors and these are marine grade connectors so they have the heat shrink on the end and the glue inside so once you heat it up then uh, it makes a nice watertight seal now that's not as needed because it's inside but I still like to know that it has the glue inside of the connector to hold on to after it heat shrinks and yes I know I should be using the cigarette lighter to heat shrink the ends but I need to get a portable heat gun uh, to use for these type of uh, jobs typically I'm in the shop and I just use my electric heat gun but I didn't have access to power on this job so just had to do with what we got So I had fr help with uh, working on this project with my friend Nick, uh, he's another band parent, he's actually in charge of all the property of the band equipment for this year, and he's the one in charge of the trailer, so it was nice to have some help on this project. That was a fun project. I'll have to do another one soon. Maybe we'll go dive deeper into the actual control box. So you saw in the install part of the video, we didn't install any lights on the exterior. We made a call just to do the interior now. We might go back in the future and add those lights and I will bring you back and possibly make a video on that. But what we accomplished of the interior lights really made a big difference for loading equipment up in the middle of the night. And remember, if you want free plans for the wiring diagram, go to, over to thegarageengineer.com slash shop and they will be there for you. And also, I will have posted up here the, the video link to the Pine Soul and how we made it into a, a battery pack for it so we can make it mobile. So jobs like that where you don't have access to direct power, then you can do it off of a, a tool battery. Again, thanks for watching and remember the ABC's the making. Always be creating. Till next time.